I don't believe in accident. I believe in divine appointment. I was born into a devout Muslim home. And God had plans, wonderful plans. I've been there. On the day I was going to kill myself, Jesus revealed himself to me and he gave me a new life. And if you pray with me, and if you believe with me, God is going to give you a new life today. Jesus Christ is real. He changes life, he changes destiny, and he changes nations. And those nations can change the world. Second Corinthians 3, 18. Hallelujah, 317. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. If you have God, if you know God through Jesus Christ, which means the Spirit of God is living inside of you. If you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, you are free man and free woman. In my earlier messages, I was sharing with you, Jesus Christ is the Redeemer, only living Redeemer, which means he bought our freedom with a ransom, with his life, with his blood, shedding his blood on a cross. For you and for me. To set us free from darkness. Set us free from bondage. Set us free from all the dark darts of the enemy. The whispers of the enemy. The lies and deception that were planted in us. He set us free. I told you earlier, he is my freedom warrior. If you are in Christ, you are free. You must be free. But it is not that easy. Because sometimes he sets us free, but we start believing still to those lies that keeps us in darkness and keeps us, those lies that keep us in bondage. I want to tell you a story that I recently heard and really loved it. There was this big circus and in that circus, there was this elephant. That elephant was the most amazing, talented elephant on the face of the earth. This elephant was the center of the, all the attractions in the circus. That elephant drawn all these people to the circus because he did amazing tricks and he was very, very good at what he was doing. One day, he, the circus went into a town and everybody heard about it. And there was this man who loved animals. And he heard about this elephant and he went to this circus to see all the things that he was doing. And he saw that how amazing this elephant was in the circus. But he saw also the harsh treatment that the elephant was receiving from his trainer. The trainer had his thing and he was beating him and pushing him and he saw the cruelty behind the scenes that this elephant was going through. And he was a wealthy man and he made a decision, I have to set this elephant free. And he went to the owner of the elephant and the trainer and he said, I want to buy this elephant. The trainer laughed. He said, you can buy this elephant. This is this circus everything. If you take this elephant away from this circus, we will have nothing to show anybody. Nobody will come and see or watch. You will close down this circus. Well, the man said, Everything has a price, and I want to pay the price for the freedom of this elephant. Because I want to set this elephant free. I don't care how much it costs, 
You just give me the number. I am going to write you a check right now and buy this elephant. And the trainer couldn't resist and he just threw the biggest number in his mind and the good man said, okay, I will do it. And he wrote a check and he said, here. So trainer was so happy because he asked probably five, ten times more that was the worth of that elephant. And this rich man took the elephant home. He was living, he was wealthy, he was living in a mansion and he had a big yard and he built a shelter for this elephant and put the elephant in that shelter. He put food and water and everything little further under a shade so elephant would go and eat and drink. An elephant had no chains. He, he didn't have to perform. He didn't have to please anybody just to be free. But days pass, this elephant didn't eat or drink. And the owner, new owner, good man, started worrying about this elephant. He said, maybe I made a terrible mistake. Maybe this elephant misses the circus. This was his life. And he tried to solve the problem and he called the veterinarians, he called animal experts. And one of the experts was able to find the problem. He said, did this elephant have any chains when he was in that circus? And the good man said, yes, he had a chain. And expert asked again, how long was that chain? He said, well, probably it was this much, not more than that. And the expert said, well, the problem is easy. You put the food and the water there, and he can only go this much. He cannot go any further. But the owner said, but he doesn't have any chains. I remove his chains. He is free right now. How come he cannot walk over there to put two, three steps and eat his food and drink his water? Experts said, well, you remove those chains physically, but in his mind, he is still chained. He still has those invisible chains in his mind. And the owner had to move the water and the food near to the elephant. My friends, Jesus Christ came and died on the cross to set you free from every infirmity, every single darkness, every single curse in your, your lives, every single lies and deception in your lives. However, sometimes even people accept him as their Lord and Savior. The very people that he removed those chains have some chains in their minds and in their hearts to reach to their potential, to be blessed to serve him, to fulfill their purposes, very purposes that God called them to do. Those are the chains that still has an effect in your hearts, in people's minds and hearts. However, the good news is if you surrender to him today, Everything, not this and that, not only your heart, but your finances, not only your finances, but your illness, not only your illness, but also your family. Leave the control, leave the A, B, C, D, E plans to say, Christ, come. Jesus, I believe that you die on the cross for me. I believe that you die on the cross to set me free. And when you set someone free, he or she is free indeed. And I believe in that, Lord. And I want you to set me free from my bondage. 
Maybe you are today struggling with, with alcohol or drug or adultery, fornication. You are struggling with worldliness and the things that you keep doing and doing and doing again and again and again and you hate it. And you feel like you are chained. Just like that elephant. And it is so hard, it is so difficult for you to remove those chains. Well, the good news is you don't have to do it by yourself. And you don't have to do it with your own strength, with your own intellect, with your own talents and gifts. The good news is Jesus said, it's already finished. It is finished at the cross. Today, whatever your chain is, maybe you want to do it right now, holding your chains, invisible chains, and say, set me free. I receive you as my Lord and Savior, or I rededicate my life to you, or I have been walking with you, but I still had this chains of unforgiveness, chains of lies, chains of many, many, many things, stuff going in my life, issues. And I have been making the same mistakes over and over and over and over again. But today, I want to surrender my chains to you. I want to surrender my imperfections to you. And I know that, Lord, I cannot do it my own. I cannot quit drugs my own. I cannot stop cheating on my wife alone or beating her up alone. I cannot stop being angry and acting hostile to other people alone by myself. But with you. Because where your spirit lives, there is freedom. And I want you to come and set me free. Set me free today, Lord. Hallelujah. And today, God wants to set us free from judgment. One thing that I want to talk to you is about judgment. We judge, especially coming from Middle East. Middle East, I know what judgment is. We all pass judgment because it is part of religion, it is part of religious spirit in our nations. We judge people. Because we try to please God with our appearances, covering the head, praying five times a day, fasting during the month of Ramadan, and we try to attain the goal of salvation without any promise, without knowing that God loves us or accepts us. We try to attain the goal without never hearing from him, without having no relationship with God by ourselves. Because most worship, and I used to worship a God that never answers, never hears, and never once says, I love you. I love you. No matter who you are, no matter how much you messed up, no matter how much you lied and cheated, ruin your life and ruin the lives of others, I love you. When you have self-righteousness, you judge others. The worst part about judging others is people who judge others hardest, they judge themselves harder. God wants to set you free from judgment. Because he says in his word, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way, in Matthew 7, for in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank 
in your own eyes. How can you say to your brother, let me take a speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank, huge one, in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Bible says we all sin, and we all fell short from the glory of God. We all sin. We are all sinners. We are all crippled, all blind, all deaf, all mute. We are all handicaps. So we can use the hands of God and be healed for his glory. So we all can need God in something. Because if we are perfect, we don't need God. But he's the only one perfect. And sometimes the crippled one points his finger at the one who is deaf and says, why can't you hear? And the other one says, why can't you walk? And the deaf looks at the blind and says, why can't you see? And the blind says, why can't you hear? I recently saw on Facebook someone wrote, said, don't judge others because they have not committed the same sin you are committing. Because it's not your shortcoming doesn't mean it is someone else's. It's not someone else's. No one understands. No one does what is right. They all sin. They all became blind. They all made mistakes. So they can eat me. But we are not talking a judgmental, angry God that's sitting on his throne and waiting for you to make a mistake, to hit you on the head or send you to hell. I was worshiping and believing in a God once upon a time. That God was angry, that God was mean, and he was waiting to judge me and send me to hell. People ask me, oh, we all worship, or tell me, we all worship same God. What a lie. What a lie. Recently a man in one of those co conferences I was speaking came up to me after my speech and he was a Muslim man from Egypt. He said, I have one question for you. Do we worship same God? And I asked his name. He, sa he said, his name is Mark. I'm not giving his real name. Let's say his name is Mark. I said, well, I know Another person whose name is Mark, I know another one whose name is Mark. Are you all same person? He said, no. I said, of course not. You all have different likes, dislikes, personalities, characters. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, you are three different people or four. How many Marks in the world? It's the same way. People may call him God. You call your God, God, your Allah, God. But his character, his attributes, his personality is completely different than my God. You may call him G-O-D, God, but it's not the same person we are talking about. If you look at the Bible... And I am, my major is literature. I can read two, three books and can tell you at least if they, they are written by the same author. Same writer wrote them or not. And when I look at the Old Testament and New Testament and the Koran, I can tell you they are not written by the same person. Then you have to make a decision who your God is. But my point is, I used to worship to a God who told me to go die and kill in his name, which I was ready to do so. But now, 
I worship a God who came and died on the cross for me. What a difference. One day, we all will come face to face with him. Whether he is going to be your judge, I heard my friend said he heard from a preacher. Whether he is going to judge you or he is going to be by you. He is the ultimate judge. And the moment we judge others, we are trying to take his seat of judgment, his position of judgment, and saying, my scales are right. Sometimes we speak about things that we do not know completely. We pass judgment and we play God. Thank God, God does not judge like us. Because his word says when prophet Samuel was looking at Jesse's sons and trying to hear from God which one was going to be the next king in Israel for Israel, God said, none of them. Man looks at the appearance but I look at the heart. Isn't it amazing? I heard one preacher, his name is Uncle Berth. He confessed one of his preachings. He's a hundred year old man right now. And he said, I used to be so judgmental, so very judgmental. One day he was a pastor and this man was coming towards him, walking, and he said in his heart, oh, the smoker is coming. The man who smokes, and he was judging him in his heart, the smoker is coming. And God said, you are a smoker too. He said, God, I never smoked a single cigarette in my life. How do you call me a smoker? God said, you didn't smoke one single cigarette in your life by my grace, by my help. And at that moment, he repented. Our judgments are not God's judgments. His judgments are perfect. I want to tell you a story from my life. I was very judgmental and I still go, we all go through this. We see something, the moment we see it, we have a tendency to judge that situation or person. Of course, imagine coming out of Islam, I was very judgmental. The more religious you become, the more judgmental you will become. More legalistic you become, more judgmental you will become. More you are operating under love, grace and mercy of God, more loving, more sweet you become. So I, it was my first year in the Lord, Jesus, and I was going to this church, and I wanted to please Jesus in every way possible still. There was this woman in the church. <laughs> Let me tell you, she just annoyed me more than you can ever imagine. She used to come to church in her little tube dress, strapless, way above her knees, and she used to go in front of me every week. It didn't matter wherever I sat down, she would go and sit in front of me. I sat on the left side of the church, right side in the middle, in the back, in the front, wherever I sat down, like on purpose, this woman would go and sit in front of me. And I just despised this woman. She came and she sat down in front of me with her little tube dress, her shoulders were open and her legs were showing, showing and she used to go praising the Lord and worshiping and shaking and I am like, I don't even want to look at you. Despicable. What does she think 
she's doing. And in my heart, I just harbor all those negative and ill thoughts about her. And one day I was speaking with someone at my church after the service. This lady came and she just tried to hold a conversation and I completely ignore her and I say something I don't even remember, but just like with my attitude of the, you know, not many the words that we speak, but our attitude is more important. So she sensed how I felt about her and she left our presence and probably her heart was broken. And at that moment, God said, Ushuk, I am not pleased with her appearance. One day in my timing, God said, she's going to change. But let me tell you, I am more disgusted with the condition of your heart. Your heart's condition is more uglier in my sight than that one. And I repent right there. I ran to the altar and I wept and wept and wept. And later on, later months, God did miraculous things in her heart. And after a while, I learned it. She was working in a strip club. She was a prostitute. And she was looking for something to change her life. God changed her. We look at people as they are. We see them, who they are at that moment, maybe. But look, God looks at the heart and God knows where they are going to be one day. Maybe you are judging yourself today. Maybe you are judging others today. And God wants to set you free because he is the ultimate judge. And one day you, my friend, will be sitting in the judgment seat. You will be facing Christ. And today, if you give your heart to him, if you surrender your life to him, he will change you. He will change your heart. And he will give you a new heart, new life, and a new destiny. <laughs>